Hello my friends, I'm Henriette from Proam Strings. Today I'm going to clean my violin and uh, I do that about once a year when I feel like it and at the moment I think it's in great need of a bit of a clean and I thought why not just record this so you can see how I do it. Now a lot of these things you might find a little bit scary but I think if you have a violin maker near where you are who could help you out if things don't quite go to plan then you should be fine trying that. What am I trying to achieve here? Now you may see that my violin, I don't know how well you can see it, but it's got lots of little uh, marks on the violin it's got little bits of rosin that have gradually caked onto my violin, although I usually clean my rosin off my varnish at the end of each day. My violin also, unfortunately, has had a couple of splashes with some hand sanitizer. Of course, I've been using a lot of hand sanitizer as I've mostly um, done my normal teaching routine and really really unfortunate it is that I've spilled some hand sanitizer on it and I'm going to try today to see if I can get it off. I don't expect that it will rub off but who knows. So that is just a little bit of a warning that things might happen. What have I got near me? I, I've put um, just my table here and I've put a protective cloth over it so that it's nice and soft for my violin to lie on. I've got two different cloths here one is going to be for putting the polish on and the other one is to polish it so to make it nice and shiny again i have got some rosin because i'm also going to clean my bow and i'll show you how i do that then i've got a pair of tweezers and you may wonder why have you got a pair of tweezers there i am going to try and clean the inside of my violin and put some rice in and i'm going to shake that rice and then shake the rice out of it again afterwards and if it's very dusty on the inside there will be a little ball of fluff which I'm going to try and get out of the violin with the tweezers so that's why I've got them for. Then I've got some surgical spirit to clean my strings. Now um, similar to the hand sanitizer this has got 70% alcohol in it so be very 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 careful when you use this that you cover the violin because otherwise you get splashes like I am and then I've just got some normal polish that you can buy anywhere uh, to polish the varnish of the violin you can also use almond oil which I sometimes use like for an intermediate clean but today I'm going to use this polish and I'll show you I've also got this little thingy which helps me get my tailpiece off because today I'm going to take everything off so that I can give it a really, really thorough clean. So, first of all, I'm going to remove the chin rest. See if I can undo this. That was quite difficult to get off. Okay. Now, I'm also going to remove the strings. And I'm just going to loosen them. And I'm going to just loosen the strings because I'm going to leave this section intact. What I'm going to try and do is to get the tailpiece off. I may have to get a bit looser still on the D string and on the A string. So, um, so let me first of all take the bridge away and keep that in a safe place. And then I'm going to take the tail piece off. There we are. Oh, the whole button comes out. There we are. I'll just put this to one side. Put the button back in. And you, you can see now this is all off, um, that I usually don't wipe underneath here or underneath the fingerboard. That's really impossible to do, isn't it? But there we go. I have got this all sorted now. And now I'm going to first clean the inside of my violin. 
So I've got my little pot of rice here and I'm going to see if I can put a few scoops of rice inside the violin. That's going to be a bit messy. But there we go. I'm just going to put this in because I want to dust the inside. If you have a lot of dust collecting inside your violin because you may uh, leave your violin out, um, you will find that over time that violin will become much more muffled in sound because the dust just dampens it you see so that's why I'm taking uh, making cleaning the inside so now what I'm going to do is just going to give it a good shake and I'm going to just go and shake it all over bit more on that side just shake it nice and into the corners I think I might have a little bit more rice actually there we go pop all of this in and then it should give it a really good shake forwards and backwards and here at the bottom I wanted to just make sure that all the corners are covered. Shake it a bit there. That way. There we are. So now I will make sure that it comes out again. I'm just going there. But whilst I'm shaking it over the inside of the back, I want to make sure that I dust the inside of the back at the same time so keep shaking until you can hear no more rice it will all come out come out eventually And it's always those last couple of grains of rice that won't come out. Can you hear? I can hear just one single grain of rice. There it is. Okay. Now, I'm going to just manipulate it round now just to see if I've got some fluff that has collected. And actually, there's still one more in there, can you hear that? Actually, I haven't got any fluff in there, but if you, you see, sometimes that you get a little more fluff rolling around, which you can then see if you can get it to go to where the F holes are. And you might be able to just with the tweezers to see if you can get it out like that. Grab it by just a hair or so. See if you can get it out. Now then, let me get the rice out of the way. Right, so we're sorted now. Now I'm going to get my polish now. And I'm going to get it on my polishing board. And I'm really going to rub it round and really clean it with this polishing cloth. Be very careful not to press too hard when you're going round the F holes. But you will need to really, really clean it and polish it like that. Uh, the purpose of this polish is that it dissolves the rosin that over time has accumulated onto your violin. So, look, there it's coming, that's looking a lot better already. Now, the moment of truth.
I think it has dissolved really nicely here. I'm also going to see if I can get rid of this stain here between the legs of the bridge, where the bridge normally is. Oh. How far can I get that clean? And you will find when you really start to look at your violin that actually there is a lot more rosin that you'd normally think. That's just accumulated onto the onto the belly of the violin. Okay, that'll do me fine for now. go this side now wow now here is some news because it looks as if it's getting rid of this mark that would be absolutely awesome wouldn't it let's see if I can get this one out as well I am going to be very, very happy because that has just got rid of that stain. Whew. I'm so relieved because I was really, really frustrated that I'd spilt it on. That will go. Right, now I've used the same section of my cloth so this is quite full of the polish and of course I can't really polish properly underneath the fingerboard so I'm going to go very very gently going up and down like that be careful that I'm not scraping the scroll there we are Let's see if I can get a little bit further under here obviously when your violin is free from rosin and, and any other junk that might fall onto it dust and goodness knows what sneezes <laughs> let's say um then that um the belly of the violin can then vibrate much more freely so it will not only look so much better it will also really enhance the sound of your violin when it's nice and clean So I'm going to rub a little bit more here and you see I'm actually really rubbing because I want to get all those little marks off. Now you may see now that there's a little bit of fluff still left along the inside of the F holes. In the olden days we used a little co cotton bud, of course nowadays I don't use any cotton buds anymore so I'm going to see this is a bit of an experiment today if I can get this just with something pointy just see if I can get that fluff off oh yes that will work if it doesn't prick through that is so I'm going to go very very gently and I'm using that same section of my cloth where I have got the polish to see if I can get the inside edges of the F holes there. I do. There we are. Now that looks much more defined as well now. I wouldn't use any knives or any other things and I would go very, very gently because obviously the violin's very delicate right there. I should have taken a picture before and after and I haven't so bear with me till next year I'll do that I think that will do for now so now let me just uh, put the lid on here so if I if I spill it it won't fall it won't finish it straight away now I've got my clean cloth and I'm just going to buff it so that it gets really nice and shiny And I'm also going to have a look at if there are, if I have missed any bits. So I can see a little section here where the rosin hasn't quite dissolved yet. 
So I'm just going to go back and use my same patch on my polishing cloth. And this area, of course, is going to be underneath my tailpiece. So I want, now that I've got it all off, I want to make sure that this is absolutely perfect before I put it all back on again, you see. Yeah, better. Better now. So, let's buff it up. Let's see if it gets nice and shiny. Oh, I'm so relieved that this bit of hand sanitizer have has disappeared. Still a little bit here. Let me just see if I can... Have I got any more left? Yes, a tiny bit more. Yeah, that's a lot better. Right, okay. Now then, let me first, before I turn the violin over and do the back and the sides, let's clean the fingerboard first. Now for that, you know I'm now quite paranoid of spilling anything <laughs> on it. So I'm just going to use a different cloth and use some surgical spirit. I'm just going to use a tissue now to put some surgical spirit on. Be careful that that doesn't spill on my bow and I'm just going to clean the fingerboard. Now, this is an ebony fingerboard, so it will stay nice and black. Be careful if you've got a painted black fingerboard, which sometimes happens, the paint will come off, so don't rub it too hard. Okay, that looks a whole lot better as well again, doesn't it? Right, so all the stickiness, look at that. All the, all the rubbish of a whole year's playing is on there. I've got time now to inspect it as well and I can see dents beginning to appear where I always have my fingers. Now if this gets too wobbly you can take your violin to your violin maker to make it flat again because it's not good for playing if you have little indents where your fingers are. So, so I've had my fingerboard chafed um, last year and every couple of years I'll have that done just to make sure that it stays nice and flat. That's it, done with the surgical spirit. Now, let's now turn, let's now first put the strings back on, but before I do that, I just want to give my bridge a little wipe as well. Now, I don't want to get the bridge too wet and you've got to be very careful because this is a very delicate little thingy, of course. But just see if I can get this to remove a little bit of the rosin that inevitably also gets onto the ch onto the bridge. And the cleaner you keep your bridge, the better it will vibrate, won't it? So we want to see if we can get all that rosin off. Yet be very, very careful not to damage it because this is super delicate. Even the bottom here as well. And all those little corners. Mm, that may not even work because it's too thick. So again, we used to do this with a cotton bud. Nowadays, we don't. I don't, anyway. You might even do this with an old toothbrush. Just very gently do that. Okay, now this will do me fine. Where's my polishing cloth now? Because now it's quite sticky. And I want to take it all off again. Take all the polish off again. There we are. Now, uh, have a look at the bridge. 
you can perhaps see that this end is slightly lower than this end. So the lower side is where the E string goes. Usually, but not always, the name of the maker is facing forward. So that's how I'm going to have it on the violin in a moment. So I'm going to put my tail piece back on. I'm just going to double check this. Actually, this is also not as clean. So whilst it's off, it's quite easy to clean it. It's much easier to clean it than when you've got it on your violin. So I'm just giving this a little polish as well. I'm very careful that I'm not touching the cork that's inside here and underneath here uh, because I need that to um, not to damage the violin, you see. So that needs to stay there. But all the rest you can just polish. And you'll be good to go. And again, I'll just polish it. Just to remove any of that polish. So that it's not sticky at all. There we go. Super. That's one sorted. Now I'm going to just pop this back on again. First of all, I need to get my tailpiece in place, so I'm getting all my strings back up and over the way they were. That was my E string here. See if they're not in a tangle. No. So I'm hooking this over the button first. That's all a bit fiddly. Where is my, oh, my E string? That's a bit too tight. Maybe I should do it the way it came off, taking the button out and then doing it like that. Would that work better? There we are, that's back. So find out where the lower side is, this way round. And now I'm first going to tighten the middle two strings. Let's see if they're not in a tangle. This is my D string. Just tightening them provisionally for now. Okay, so my G's gone underneath here sneakily, hasn't it? It's quite nice that it doesn't all go 100% perfectly because um, that's probably how it will go in your case as well. So very gently, I'm not tightening it at all. So, there we go. D and A are the first ones that I get in place. And then I'm going to put this in position. Now you can probably see the markings. I'll move it again so you can see the markings. Where my bridge used to be. I'm going to put it back in exactly the same spot. Now. There we are. And I'm leaning it slightly backwards. Can you see? So it's slightly angled backwards because a bridge... A bridge is actually straight at the back and slightly curved at the front. Okay, now the back needs to be at right angles to the belly of your violin. So I will, it will move forwards when I start to tighten the pegs, you see. So I'm leaning it slightly backwards so that later on I will have it in a good position. And then I'm just provisionally going to put the strings in their right places. And not tighten them very tight. I'm not yet tuning it up, but I just want to have some support for the for the sound post. And that is why I put the strings back on before I clean the back of the violin. Uh, if you have all your strings off, the sound post, which is that little post of wood which stands up underneath the right leg of the bridge may fall over if there is no pressure on the bridge. So the bridge, as it were, squeezes the violin together and that and holds that sound post in place. But I'm not going to move the violin too much. You will also have noticed that I've left it flat on my table whilst I was cleaning it. I wasn't going about and lifting it up um, because I don't want to risk 
uh, toppling over the sound post because then you've got a repair on your hands you see so I'm very very cautious with that so now I've put it all back I'm double checking that little button here is it properly in the violin does this all look good yes oh I've forgotten to clean the um, tailpiece here I'll do that in a second then I'm putting all my strings back but only sort of provisionally I'm not I'm not uh, tightening them too much and now I've got a bit of time to just polish the tailpiece here if you've got it off you might do that whilst the, the tailpiece is off your violin because it again is much easier to do but since I've now put it all back I don't want to take it off anymore although if this is very dirty as as it is in my in my case I should perhaps have taken it off you see how I hold my finger underneath here so that I'm not pressing the fine tuner against the varnish underneath actually an old toothbrush would come in handy wouldn't it here as well I'll have a bit more of a polish here Yes, that looks a bit better now. Okay, I can also see now that there's a little patch that I have missed right here. See, I'm just polishing it again. And then get my polishing cloth, my other cloth to make it nice and shiny. Oh wow, I'm quite happy with that. Now then, now I'm going to put some new is actually not too bad but I've got some new polish and I'm just going over it just to see that it's nice and clean I have it all out so I might as well I might as well polish it all today there we are and then we'll buff it so that it's really nice and shiny look at that that looks a whole lot better, doesn't it? Now, now for the difficult bits. And that is the, the sides, the rim. Now, this is not so bad on this side, but usually this end is... Oh no, actually this side is my worst side, so I'm going to start here. Really polishing all of that. Just here in this corner there's quite a lot of rosin as well. we go now that looks a whole lot nicer let me just buff the sides as well so that gets nice and shiny and again I used to use a little um, 
cotton bud to get really into the corners here but nowadays you know it's not the end of the world if it stays on them a little bit more there we are so we go right round making all of that really nice and shiny super now now I've got maybe the hardest part still to do, and that is the scroll. And the scroll I will clean whilst the strings are on. You might argue it's easier to do the scroll and the peg box whilst the strings are off, but I'm, it's much easier to do that when you've got your violin upright you see and for that reason I want to have my strings on because there is this risk of knocking the sound post over if you take away the pressure on the bridge so that is why I'm cleaning this while the strings are on of course if you're super thorough and super careful you might do this with when the strings are off because you can get into these little gaps a lot easier you see but I'm just not taking the risk today and I have actually just now found a really nice and soft old toothbrush so let me do an experiment and let's see if that works for the scroll I'm hoping I'm not getting too much flack about that doing that on camera but I just want to see how it works because I can't really get the polishing cloth into those little corners. It actually works wonders, doesn't it? Oh wow. So I'm going very, very gently right in there. And you can really see, when you do it like this, how well the polish removes the varnish. It just dissolves it. I'm just going to have a go here as well. Obviously, please do not use a toothbrush or anything hard on the rest of your violin. I think I'm forgiven for using the scroll. that and now I'm using my buffing cloth to see if I can get right in there as well just to make it nice and shiny oh look at that I'm really quite happy with that just really really polishing that so that it gets really nice and shiny have you noticed that I never ever have put the violin on its front on my table because I don't want to put any pressure on those strings right now or any time. So I'm having it on its side or in between my knees or on the table, on its back, but never on the strings. All right. Now, now I can still see that little mark where I had that um, hand sanitizer spot so I'm just going to have one more attempt to see if I can make it disappear and then I will, will run out of polish I'm afraid as well <laughs> so another day I'll try and do that even better a little bit here as well that I'm not completely happy with.
Right, let's see. A final polish here. Yeah, I can still see it a little bit, but it's not as bad. Oops! And now I've just knocked the bridge a little bit. Can you see that? Right, now then. I have got this mute that I wanted to clean as well a little bit. Now, of course, here it really doesn't matter if you use your toothbrush. And eventually I might invest in a new one because this one is just the most horrid one. But then, how long have I had this one? 20 years at least. There we are. Right, that'll do for today. Now, let's put it all together properly now, shall we? So, I'm going to put the strings back first. So very gently, start with that bridge. Be very, very careful. I'm going to see if I can get this little protector on the E string in place. And that looks precisely like where I was. Then again, I'm starting on the middle two strings. And I'm just going to see that my string is properly wound around, around the pegs in the peg box. There we are. How do we wind? The pegs round the how do we wind the strings? Just a little bit like that. Then I'm going to have a go at the A. I'll show you in a minute how what a good peg books peg box should look like. Let me just see if I can sort this without knocking the bridge over. So now I'm going to have a look here all the time, wriggle the bridge back in place so that the, the back of the bridge is at right angles to the violin. Very gently tune it up slowly. What is it doing? It's moving forward. So come back a little bit. Now that is quite a fiddly job, so I'm going slowly, moving it back. And again, if you find it's too scary, just take this to your local violin shop and see if they can help you if you can't manage. flat now but I'm just going to do, go slowly checking that bridge all the time because obviously now that my violin's very nicely polished I don't want to break it right now and again I'm looking at my bridge just very gently easing it back. That sounds about right. Yeah, that sounds reasonably well upright.
checking my bridge again and it's gone a little bit forward again which is a bit annoying and that looks better Now, when I put my chin rest back, I'm really looking from this end to see if it doesn't touch the tailpiece anywhere. And then, with my little thingy, start to tighten it. So let me see if it's properly in place now. No, it's not exactly in the middle. So loosen it up again until you can move it. And then when you tighten your uh, screws here, Make sure you don't ram them tight, but just until they hold, that's enough. So loosely, because you don't want to compress the rim here, okay? So you want to make sure that this is not tightly fitted, just gently fitted. Now then, I've got one more thing to do, and that is my bow. Here is my cloth, where is that wet side? So I'm using very little, polish on the bow and I'm very very careful that I do not touch the hair but you know rosin will accumulate on your bow as well and it will be really nice to occasionally just go over that and make sure it gets nice and clean as well now and sometimes I use stickers for my pupils so there's a little bit of residue of glue on there, so I'm taking that off. What's this? What's happened here? And cleaning your violin gives you an opportunity also to give it a good inspection, you see. Is it all still as good as I think it is? Any repairs then you can have done, and that gives you another year of wonderful playing. Just occasionally to give it a bit of... Tender loving care is good, isn't it? So, similar to what I did with my violin, I'm just going to buff this bow as well. Lovely. That feels really nice and clean. And then I'm just going to give it a little bit of rosin so that I know it's all freshly done. Lovely job. Now let's see. I might actually see if I can get my old picture up and do show you before and after here. I think that looks quite nice, especially for a person like me who hardly ever polishes their violin. It's a big improvement. So uh, I hope that was all clear. Let me know if you have any questions below in the conversation you can write your questions and I will usually get to see those because now I get my hoover out and I've taken all the junk out of my violin case and I'll give that a little hoover as well but that is the end of that thank you very much for watching I look forward to seeing you again soon
Goodbye.